technical delay. Yes, we are live. So good morning, everybody. Sorry for the technical delay, um, but that's okay because we've got something in store. And for those of you that are just kind of catching this, you might be on your lunch break or your break. So this is even better. Um, I am Melanie Day with You've Got Curls and Hair Loss Center. And I have my lovely friend and co-host with me, Dana Branham with um, My Money Monday. And we're going to be talking about finances, women and finances, um, because financial literacy is really, really important. And there's just, there's a lot of things that are out there, but we wanted to share with you things that aren't scary, share with you the facts about a lot of things, and then hopefully just open up the conversation um, and things that you can kind of share with the next generation, maybe like with your nieces, your daughters and things like that. So um, a few housekeeping notes. Hey, Carmen. Hello. Happy that you actually got to catch it. It was good that we had a little bit of a delay when more people were catching. This is great. So for those um, that are joining us live, be sure to drop your email address in the comments below because we will be having giveaways. Um, three people who download the PDF, the free PDF, which is how to achieve healthy hair at home. You'll also be put into a raffle to win a copy of Dana's book. So there's a lot, a lot of good stuff that's going to be shared today. So without further ado, let's get in it. Dana, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I think I'm doing slightly better than you guys because it's not 20 some degrees. Right? I know. But that's okay. That's okay. We, okay. we won't we, we won't hold it against you. That's all right. We won't. right. <laughs> yes. So let the world know. I know, but I know who you are, but not everybody else does. So who are you? Right. And thank you for having me, Melanie. I really appreciate it. And yeah. you are right. There's no reason for us. There are too many resources out there. I'm one of them, but there's so many resources resources out there for financial literacy, uh, financial education, and all of those things. So we want to be sure that we're breaking down those barriers, for, especially for women, uh, because we have been somewhat left behind uh, in yeah. the past. And so I want to be sure that we are doing that. So thank you for the opportunity to share. Uh, but I'm originally from Lexington, Kentucky, which is obviously where we met and in a networking group, if I'm remembering correctly. And, oh, so, yeah. um, and we are, I'm, I wrote a book and it's a personal journey through cleaning up my own money mess. And so I hope and pray that it's a blessing to the people who read it and put it into practice. Um, it's simple conversational tone, just how we will uh, conduct today. It will, it's just like that. And I've had friends say, I can hear you telling me these things as I'm reading. So that's pretty awesome. But it's intended to be a simple way uh, to step you through cleaning up whatever money mess it is that you have. And most of us have one. Yes. So it's intended to do that. Yes. So I'm happy that you talked about that. So that kind of, I guess, reminds me of the topic of financial literacy. So especially like um, for women, why do you feel that financial literacy is so important? Well, so historically women, and I quote statistics all the time when I'm doing presentations, but historically women have scored 40% lower on financial literacy tests, quizzes, and so forth. Now, Here's what we both know, and I think all the women who are watching, and even the men who might be watching, know mm -hmm. good and well that women are not um, less intelligent when it comes to really anything, right? Mm -hmm. The financial literacy thing, I think, has is quite intimidating, right? I think that people shy away from it because it's math based, and we know how people feel about math, yeah. and so we have. That's why it's important to to talk about it in a simple way. Not because it's you're simple minded, but just to make it plain, mm -hmm. uh, you know, keep it as simple as possible so people understand the concept because it's it shouldn't be intimidating. It shouldn't be outside of the league of what we can comprehend if it's done in the right way. And so that's what I aim to do. Yeah. So with your book and then also on the topic of um, financial literacy, do you feel especially and sometimes even like with money, some of us might have a hard time kind of saving money. Like we're great at getting mm -hmm. it, but we have a little bit harder time of holding on to it. So what what tips do you have for that? Yeah. And, and rightfully so, because I don't know about you, but every time I think I got a little piece of money saved, something happens. Yeah. Just in this past month, I've had three things. I got a nail in my tire, I had to get one new tire, I had to you know, my TV went out. So now I got to contemplate getting the TV and all these other things. So it really does happen. However, we can uh, do better 
financially if we prepare for those things. We know something's going to happen at some point, right? So that's why yeah. there's always talk about having an emergency fund set aside, right? Uh, yes. But beyond that, beyond the emergency fund, so those are short-term things that we have to think about, but we have to be thinking long-term. We can't live just for today. I know there's a whole thing, YOLO and, and all that stuff. Okay, all right. However, the life expectancy <laughs> of women especially is very long, 80, 80 some years, 90 some years. And so if we got to live that long, we got our money has to last that long. So that's why it's super important. But when it comes to savings, we have to break it down, short term goals, emergency things, and then the longer term goals and maybe even some mid range goals, because you might have a goal of. Okay, you got the emergency fund set aside, but then you have savings for do, doing vacations and other fun things. But kind of mid-range, if you're thinking, hey, I might want a second home, or I might want to buy a car in five, ten years, whatever. Or I might have to buy one for my child, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they're just five right now, but I want to prepare 10, you know, 10, 11 years earlier. So those are kind of mid-range. And then uh, with retirement looming for all of us, mm -hmm. then to keep that in mind as well. I like, wow, look, so you touched on a lot of things. So um, savings for me growing up and, and my mom, you know, I, I still have her voice in my head all the time because she says, you know, make sure that you're not too busy making a living and forgetting to, you know, to make a life, to have a life, you know. Right. And then also, too, she was like, well, you know, are you are you paying yourself? You know, are you putting stuff aside? And so I, I hear that constantly. Absolutely. So. Besides just having, you know, some leftover coins in a, in a piggy bank, what are some realistic ways of saving that don't seem overwhelming and that you can get, you know, kind of get different uses out of it? Sure. I think the best thing for anyone to do is start where you can, because, you know, you hear people saying, and yes, the goal is to send, to say 10 to 20 percent of your income. Well, I might not be able to do that right now because mm -hmm. I have bills, I have debts, I have to pay and all of those things. And mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine, but save something because something's better than nothing. And especially if you invest it, then you still are taking advantage of what time can do to money. Okay. Uh, there is a value in, in having things invested longer than shorter times. And so start where you are. If it's, that's $25 a week, then do $25 a week and then increase it as you can. Um, and Try not to go into more debts and all those things in the meantime to where it's not going to continue to hinder you long term. Yeah. So you you mentioned investments and as far as like, you know, letting time be on your side. So can you kind of explain like the different types of investments and what what's yeah. the difference? Absolutely. And when I say time, I'm saying um, and investing. Whether it's mutual funds, whether it's stocks, whether it's bonds, whether it's crypto, whether it's um, <laughs> ETFs and all of those things, all of them are time sensitive. So the sooner you can start doing that, better. however, that sooner needs to be when you're at least somewhat basically educated about it. You don't want to just give people your money and let them handle it. And you don't know anything. Right. That's the last thing. So. Always ask questions to your understanding. If somebody's not willing to answer questions, then that's a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Move on to the next person because there are plenty of advisors out there who can help. But so the whole the basis of all of those um, it, for mutual funds is stocks and or bonds. And there's a different mix. But basically, just think of that as just a bag of securities. Right. And it's varying ones in there. The whole intent of a mutual fund is to diversify you versus if you have just stock in, let's say, Tesla right now mm -hmm. and all your money's in Tesla. <clears throat> I just read something the other day that said the Tesla stock. Yes, it's doing OK. However, it's going to be volatile going forward. So you don't yeah. want to have heart attack just because Tesla's messing up because that's where all your money is. You know, your mom would also say, don't put all your eggs in one bag. Right. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> It's that concept. So you can have the eggs in the basket, but one's purple, one's yellow, one's pink, one's green, and so forth, right? So then yeah. you're not beholden to just one in the basket. Okay. So if I if I wanted to, I guess, do like a mutual fund or something basic, this is all new to me. I have, I've kind of heard of it. I don't really know where to start. What are some good places to go? Where could I go for that? Yeah. So one, you probably want an advisor to help you with that. And 
from my experience, most of the good mutual funds, they, the companies work through advisors. There are some places where you can go, right, to Fidelity, to um, Schwab. You can get some assistance online. So it's not your personal investor, but you can um, have a representative to help you make those decisions. But um, any of those. Fidelity has great funds. Vanguard has great funds. Um, American Funds is great. Franklin Thompson. I mean, there are. I don't even know how many mutual fund companies are out there, but there are plenty of them yeah. and plenty of them have great products for someone to get started in. Okay. So I, I like that. Why do you feel that a lot of women feel kind of nervous or apprehensive about getting into stocks or getting into mutual funds? Like, why do you feel that it's a big deal for us? I think what the basics of that is, is we are risk averse. Mm-hmm. And we don't we don't want to risk what we have for some unknown out there. Yes. However, I would implore any woman to look at and even if you need help looking at it, look at the stock market has done since 1930, whatever. Right. Look at it since what it's done in 1950. Look at it, what it's done since just 2000. And you will see that, yeah, it seems unknown, but it's really not. Because history repeats itself. The stock market's done well over 10% for that whole 80 some year history. And even if you just look 50 years back or 20 years back, it's done very well. So you can put stuff in the stock right? mm. um, yeah. and, and make some good decisions there. Yes, some have fallen by the wayside. Some of those companies are <laughs> defunct and all of those things. But there's a history there that you can't deny. So we can't be so risk averse that we're, we are... Um, hindering our future financial success. Because what happens is you are, if you only have your money in the bank and you're only earning 1%, then you're not going to make the goal. Your money's not going to last. Even inflation is higher than that 1%. And mm-hmm. there's something called the rule of 72 that says if you divide 72 by the rate of interest that you're earning, that's how long it takes you to double your money. So imagine if you divide 72 by that 1%, some of us won't be alive by the time our money doubles. Okay. That's just the reality of it. So we have to earn more. So just by that same token, even if you just earn 6%, which is fairly low compared to what I just said about the stock market, your money's going to double in 12 years, but you can even do better than that. So we have to not be as so risk averse as we have been in the past. It's not going to work. You can't just save your way to wealth. You have to wow. invest. Yeah, so that's a great segue. And in in the comments, um, people are, are commenting in the comments. So my friend, she just commented. Um, she's like, I work with investments or with investments every day, and I'm still intimidated by like you know. Wow. Yeah, I work okay. with investments every day, and and it still intimidates me. Um, yeah. yeah, she's she's an accountant, so mm-hmm. it's yeah, it's you know, it's just so much that's out there, and you know you. I'm a huge fan of Shark Tank. Like I love Shark mm-hmm. Tank and, you know, like the I'm nerd with, you know, CNBC and all that stuff. Yeah. But when you see all these numbers running at you and, and opinions like, oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. Right. You're like a deer in a headlight. And right. so you just stop and you do nothing. Yes. Um, I've seen so, that. Yeah. And so I'm happy, you know, to have people like you because you're actually, I think you were my you were my first advisor mm-hmm. with finances and just to kind of letting me know like, Hey, like you should probably go in this direction and you need to do this and you need to do that. And I'm going to kind of digress a little bit. We were talking about um, saving and sometimes you feel like when you're in debt, you can't really save. Mm-hmm. And for those of you that are out there that are listening or that will hear this on a replay, I'm a firm believer um, definitely like if, you know, if you follow Dave Ramsey, I know he can be a little aggressive with things, <laughs> but the, the concept is great when it comes to like the debt snowball. Um, I'm going to tell you yeah. because, you know, you think that you have no money when, you know, when you have to fund an emergency fund or something and, you know, it might be a thousand dollars for a basic or maybe like $500, depending on how much you bring in. But when you see how much you owe on your statements each month and you tally that up, it might be a couple grand. Or when you see how much you're eating out in a week, Starbucks or, you know, um, McDonald's or not even Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a meal. 
here's the thing. So we're the commercial, there's a Chick-fil-A commercial and the lady said that she was able to cash in her points of 50,000 points. I think it was, I think it was 50,000. You have to research it. Yeah. It was like 50,000 points that she had for Chick-fil-A and she was able to feed a homeless shelter. So what? the kids, so my husband and I were like, man, that is a lot of money at Chick-fil-A, first of all. Yes. And first of all. Yes. Yeah. And I don't even have an appetite for that. Um, so we did the research and I think in a year, it might've been maybe like a thousand or $4,000, $4,000 in a year. She could have been a farm rep or something, you know, where she has mm -hmm. meetings. But the point that I'm making is, is that dollar amount. Right. You know, it's a lot. and yeah. it gets away from you very easily. I can remember one, I sometimes have people had people to track their expenses for uh, a little bit of time. Just to kind of see where are you, what are you really doing with your money? Because, you know, it gets, like I said, it gets away from you. Exactly. And so I tracked mine alongside a client at the time. And that month I spent $50 just at McDonald's. And I said, oh, no, we can't continue this. <laughs> Not only my checkbook, but my waistline and everything right. was needed to help with that. So, yeah, we had to stop. But it's that awareness, right? Uh, and you have to. So it's great to have budgets. It's great. And I know people don't like to hear that. It's great to have a budget. The key to the budget is checking against it and seeing what your actual is. Yeah. Because you can budget all day long and uh, your utility bill, if you think it's $75 and that bill comes and it's 125, that $50 has to come from somewhere else. Yeah. So you have to, you have to check against it and be sure you're budgeting realistically. And I yeah. know most people, I would say 99% of people aren't budgeting enough if they're even budgeting at all for food. Yeah. Not doing. <laughs> and, and I'll say this, you know, it's, it's really hard. And for those of you that are W2, you know, people, it's a little bit easier, but for people like myself, where yeah. I'm a 1099, I'm self-employed. It is so hard. It is, it is very. so hard to try to, and you know, to try to figure out because it's, it's like, it's, what do you call it? Um, it's like, I don't want to say unpredictable very predictable income. Yes. Unpredictable. Yeah. Like, you know, it's daily. You literally are going day to day, you know, depending on the week, depending on the month and you can try to forecast stuff, but it's, it's really hard. And that is something, even as a small business owner, you know, I think a lot of us, we still kind of struggle with um, just, you know, just trying to figure out how things will go. But yeah. this is good. This is good. So those of you that are listening, I know you're all in these comments. So don't be shy. <laughs> Ask some questions because we have we yeah. have um, information for you that we want to share. And oh, yes, Carmen. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. She says yeah. this is valuable information requires action. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No yes. reason to just take in the information and not do anything. Right. Yes. And I'll say this, too. I think as women, um, I forget the saying. But basically, like if you if you teach a woman, if you tell a woman something, she basically tells the world because yeah. she's teaching it to her kids. She's you know telling it to her family and everything. Yeah, in my um, so in my past life, I was a um, mentor for some young girls through my church, and mm -hmm. it was called God's Girls. And one of our models was transform a girl, transform the world, because mm. girls are going to share, women are going to share. And so it, it's important that we continue to do that. Don't be, you know, we know there's some mean girl or angry black woman miss out there. But for the most mm -hmm. part in my life, I don't know those people. So we oh, all yeah. are sharing what we know and what we're doing to improve ourselves. We're, you know, saying, girl, I have this goal. Come and do this with me and all of that stuff. Continue that. And especially around money because yes. we all can win together. Yes. And you mentioned earlier, as far as like building wealth, I think you mentioned stocks. There's a difference mm -hmm. between just saving and then also yeah. investing. So let's talk about that aspect when it comes to building wealth. Yeah. And it, I'm glad you brought that up. I was just reminding myself of how we how I started the year with my Wealth Building Wednesday tips. And yes. the first one for this year was, are you a saver or are you an investor? And it has to do with that risk. A saver is, you know, doesn't want to take too much risk, is happy at the bank. And there's a time and place for that. If you get to, you know, 75 years old and you know you need your money, you know, all those things. OK, that works. You can't be that risk averse at 35, 45, 50 OK, because your money has to last a long time. But um, 
so an investor is it doesn't you don't have to be a sophisticated investor and you know doing everything that's out there right now you do not however you have to do at least some of the basics and for me some of the basics right now are obviously mutual funds um some maybe some individual stocks if there's some companies that you just like uh, and probably even i was like crypto in there now even though i my well on Wednesday tip yesterday was that I still don't know everything I want to know about crypto. So I'm doing more research now between now and the end of the year. But there are some resources out there um, to find that out, too. Mm -hmm. um, just as a part, just because I think I'm certain that it's a part of the future of investing. I already have missed out on some of it, but that's OK. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It'll be there. So, yeah, that's where I would start. But so most 401ks, 403bs and all those things that employers are not going to have those extra things, but you can certainly get started with mutual funds. And that's an easier way, an easier concept to grasp. Because every, I think everyone understands diversification and you don't want all your eggs in one basket, as I said before. Right, right. So let's talk about the relationship because I think um, finding someone that you can trust and that can be a guide for you. I mean, I know for me, it's it's been... Um, it's been hard because, you know, some people are all about the money and that's all about what they're about. And mm -hmm. then you have people like yourselves who are, or who are educators at heart, you know, like they, they have a passion, they love what they do. They want to help people win. everybody wins. When you win, they win type of thing. So how, how, how can people find, how can women find the right financial advisor? Um, I hate to be sexist. <laughs> but I might be. I would say probably start with women. Let me okay. just put that out there. I can tell you in the industry of financial advisors for probably the past 10 years, they've been trying to put on seminars and workshops and all these things with women as a special topic, like working with women and all these things. And I think mm -hmm. that's kind of crazy, but there's still few women in the industry as well. It's getting better, but not. it's not where it should be and could be. So, but, so I would sneak out a woman first because I think we just relate better that way. Um, but then I also would dive deeper. So, and for whoever you talk to, woman or man, I would say, ask questions, ask them questions about what you don't understand. Cause you can tell a lot by an advisor or someone who's supposed to be helping you by how they answer those types of questions. So if you don't understand, ask the question. Because if they're not an educator at heart, like you said, that I am and I really am, um, mm -hmm. then they won't answer the question to your liking. Move on. Hmm. You have to have at least a basic understanding of what's going on with your money. It's not it's not my money. I'm not retire trying to retire on your money. Right. So it's not mm -hmm. important enough for me, only me to know about it. And I've had clients say, girl, just take care of it. No, nope, we're going to talk about this first. Just mm -hmm. so you know, this is why we're doing this. So yes, I make the recommendation and I think this is best for you, but this is the why behind it. And that's where you want to get to. So get, seek understanding. If you ask about fees, that's important because that has an impact on your growth and all those things. Understand that fees are fairly standard across the board in the industry now. Um, so there shouldn't be too many wild swings between what somebody tells you. OK, mm -hmm. but if someone won't answer about fees again, that's the red flag. Move on, because mm -hmm. that should be totally transparent on how much money I'm making off of you. Mm -hmm. OK, so what's the difference between like a, and I'm like throwing out my big words here. <laughs> so what's the difference between like a fiduciary Mm -hmm. And then, like, I guess, like a non fiduciary, whatever. Because I, you know, I see these commercials. I see ones, oh, yeah. you know, come to us and because we do this. Yeah. And really, um, so there's a, there are new rules that came about from down from the Department of Labor, but then also just industry wide. And kind of the big thing is now saying, I'm your fiduciary. In all honesty, anybody who's taking care of your money and you're paying them should be your fiduciary. Your CPA is your fiduciary as well. So it's not just financial advisors. Your if your estate attorney is somewhat of a fiduciary taking care of business. All it means is that I have your best interest at heart. And you only want to work with people who have your best interest at heart. Yeah. Okay. Period. 
Yeah, period. And so there are, yes, there are some distinctions that you can have with a CFP versus a non-CFP and all those things. It doesn't matter. In my eyes, it doesn't matter because, and I'm seeking my CFP. However, I'm not doing that because I want to be better for my people. I think I'm already, you know, making good decisions for them. It's just another designation. It has nothing to do with how much I take care of clients. Okay. Okay. This is good. See, we need more conversations like this because, yeah. you know, even just within these last, I don't know, and I can't even, I don't even know the time, but maybe the last like 20 some minutes, 30 minutes that we've been talking, we touched on a lot of important topics from saving, the difference between saving and investing, you know, yeah. which vehicle you're going to put your money in, um, let your money work for you. Like we work hard. And, yes. I, and, I, and I will say this, I think, you know, for a lot of us, you know, sometimes, um, especially if you are a woman of faith and things like that, sometimes in our minds, we get this kind of twisted that if you are thinking about money, thinking about finances, then you are a, a, this mindset, you know, like you're whatever, but it's, it's, you want to be prepared, you know, you want to be prepared for the future, understand um, what things really are, um, how things yeah. are, because, you know, money is a tool. Money you know, is a tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Money is a tool. Um, it's a protection. Um, you know, it's things that you want to be able to make sure that you, um, are using wisely, you know? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That we're using everything wisely. Um, yes. And so once again, for those of you that are watching, make sure you, um, download the free PDF. And if you want this free PDF, make sure that you put your email address in the comments. And the free PDF is how to achieve healthy hair at home. And you'll also have a chance to win a copy of Dana's book. So make sure you put your email address in the comments so that we can contact you. Yep. But <clears throat> before we wrap it up, um, does anyone have any questions or anything? I know I'm kind of putting, you know, those on the spot, but um, <laughs> that's that's out there. But I I'll go ahead and I'll say this because I, I kind of have a question. Um, so I recently started um, doing more ETFs, you know, just kind of got into doing ETFs, had no idea what that was, but I knew <laughs> that. I was like, you know what? I think I just want to buy this stock. And so um, my advisor that I'm working with now, she's like, well, have you thought about an ETF? I'm like, what's that? She's like, yeah. well, let me let me tell you all about it. Sure. And so sure. she did. And so it's kind of exciting because you get to see like this bucket of stuff that's in there. Mm -hmm. And you kind of see that it has different percentages of, whatever um and that you just sit on it and just mm -hmm. let it let it ride and i i'm excited about it i'm really excited about it and one thing i will learn just from my or one thing i will say just from my experience um from the past is that it's never too late to learn about finances regardless right. of how old you are you know? and then also to um teaching the next generation Absolutely. Because even like for us, you know, like I, you know, we all have family and younger siblings and cousins and nieces and nephews or whatever, and each one teach one. And so the little things that I've learned, I've been able to share with other people and man, compound interest. I, I feel that but that is something that should be a requirement that should be taught before you graduate high school. I agree. Yes. <laughs> I definitely agree. And our school systems, unfortunately, have shied away from including financial literacy. And I tell people all the time, I, I, if somebody's heard this before, they probably heard it 10 times if they listen to me, that I have two finance degrees, a BA and an MBA, both with finance concentrations. Personal finance was not a part of the curriculum. So imagine if you are a, an arts major, you know, I know they're not getting it. If I didn't get it, right? And so, but unfortunately, our school systems have shied away from having financial literacy outside of having JA come in. And JA does great work, but yeah. not every class gets JA. It's no. dependent upon the, whether the teacher wants it and the school wants it and all those things. And so then there are, you know, this whole vast of students who don't even get that. So it needs to be a part of the curriculum across the board for everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And because my, my thinking is, is that, you know, a lot of, 
a lot of young students are living life early. You know, they yeah. might be helping out at home. They might have a family of their own. You know, everyone's reality is mm -hmm. different. And right. it's like we can, you know, the cycle can be broken with a lot of things if you have the education at yes. an earlier age. So yeah, this is good. So before we wrap it up, I want to say this. Thank you so much for being on here with me. Dana. Thank you for asking me. I appreciate yes. it. It's been good. And for those of you that are listening live, thank you. We really appreciate it. And also, too, this is one of the added benefits of being a part of In Living Curls hair care community. Not only do you get advice um, about hair and wellness and things like that, but we're looking at things holistically as, as women. Financial health is a big thing. It is. And it is makes or breaks a lot of things. Um, the stress that comes with, you know, financial situations can also affect your hair because mm -hmm. you're, you know, there's a lot of stress that comes with it. So everything is connected. So this is one of the benefits that you have with being a part of In Living Curls hair care community. You have access to experts, you have, um, you know, books and PDFs, so much, you know, thank you, Terry. Oh, thank I really you. appreciate it. Yes. Um, so much um, that's here. So if there's things that you would like for us to discuss, you know, next time um, when, you know, when I have other people on here, just let me know, put in, um, put your comments, um, put your thoughts in the comments below, or you can shoot me an email or whatever, but everybody have a great day, depending on your location, stay warm, <laughs> right. make, make the best of it. And I appreciate it so much, Dana. Have a good one. Bye. Thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye-bye.